You can't talk about the meteoric rise of the modern convenience store without talking about 7-Eleven. And you can't go to 7-Eleven without purchasing gum, beef jerky, a slice of pizza, a large Slurpee, a small coffee, an apple fritter, a lotto ticket, a tank of gas, basically everything you need for a life well lived. This is how a humble ice house in the roaring 20s turned into the modern international 24-7 convenience store. In 1927, a man known as Uncle Johnny, not to be confused with Uncle Jesse, turns his industrial ice house in Dallas into a retail store. It's basically a giant walk-in freezer selling milk, eggs, and other stuff that needs to be cold. In 1928, someone from the company allegedly comes back from an Alaskan vacation with a totem pole and puts it in front of one of the ice houses, which hence becomes known as a totem store because you toted things from the store? See, it's a pun and cultural appropriation. By 1937, Southland Ice Company president and founder Joe C. Thompson Jr., not to be confused with Uncle Joey, helped bring Uncle Johnny's idea to ice houses all over the country. And spoiler alert, it was a smash success. In 1939, the world is at war! 1946, the war is over, we won! Later that year, the post-World War II economy is booming and it's time for a rebrand. Goodbye totem stores, hello 7-Eleven. Not only does the name rhyme, it also signals the new extended hours of operation, 7 a.m. to 11 p.m., seven days a week. So, throughout the 50s, children named Deborah and 7-Eleven stores start popping up all over the country. 7-Eleven cements itself as America's preeminent late night, early morning store. In 1959, Dairy Queen store owner Omar Nedlik puts some soda bottles in his freezer after his refrigerators break. He sells the frozen pops and surprisingly, it's a massive hit with customers. So he starts selling frozen sodas on purpose under the name Icy. In 1963, right outside the University of Texas, late night crowds after college football games force 1711 to extend their hours on game nights. The after hours experiment was so successful, 7-Eleven officially changed their hours to 24-7, making us all wonder, why do they still have locks if they're always open? Anyway, this same year, 7-Eleven grows to more than 1,000 stores. 1965, 7-Eleven makes a licensing deal with the Icy Company with one special change. The 7-Eleven Icy would be called the Slurpee. The drink was wildly successful. People slurped down Slurpees like they'd never slurped before. There were literally pins associated with each of the Slurpee flavors. One of the pins just says, I have slurped. And mm -hmm. let's just leave it at that. In 1974, 7-Eleven opens its 5,000th store and expands internationally to Japan. By the end of the decade, we see the advent of the countertop microwave oven, the roller grill, the self-serve soda fountain, which of course births the soda drink to rule all soda drinks, the big gulp. In the 90s, convenience stores become glorious backdrops for emerging indie and stoner culture. Just look at clerks. I think we can all agree that Jay and Silent Bob are the unofficial guardian angels of convenience stores, right? In 2003, guess how many 7-Elevens there are? Okay, okay, I'll tell you. 25,000 internationally. Throughout the European and Asian markets, 7-Eleven becomes a household name and in many ways a symbol of American culture. By 2007, 7-Eleven has outgrown McDonald's by 20,000 stores. I still have an outgrown McDonald's and I'm in my late 20s. One BTS meal, please. In 2012, 7-Eleven expands to Indonesia, where stores have Wi-Fi and live music like coffee shops. In countries like Thailand, the Philippines, and South Korea, 7-Eleven becomes immensely popular, and people actually love their convenience store riffs on local food. In 2014, Beyonce releases a song called 7-Eleven. That, I'm pretty sure, isn't about 7-Eleven. Anyway, in 2018, Taiwan opens a completely automated 7-Eleven. Let's just hope the robots don't turn on us. Can you imagine Terminator 2 with a Slurpee machine? By 2021, AKA now, 
7-Eleven is nearly a century old and totally feeling itself, just like Harry Belafonte. They've got 60,000 stores worldwide and counting. 7-Elevens in Hong Kong look like open air bars. A lot of Hawaiians say that 7-Eleven is actually the best place to get Spam Masubi. And in 7-Eleven Obsessed Denmark, you can grab a latte at the mega 7-Eleven in downtown Copenhagen. There's even a 7-Eleven Airbnb you can rent to fulfill your dream of sleeping inside a convenience store. We've come a long way from Uncle Johnny's Ice House, but 7-Eleven still feels like home. So we salute you, 7-Eleven, for keeping our tanks full, our gulps big, and our road trips stocked with various types of jerky. Now say it with me. I have slurped. Hey, y'all. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to our channel and comment on what you want us to cover next. We might not actually do it, but we'll definitely read the comment. Thanks.